uh, you know, even if it is it goes against all of her intuitions, there's this sort of counterintuitive feeling that she has that still continues. When she has no place to go, she often shows up on his doorstep. And I think in a strange way, if we're successful with the show, the more important relationship will be their present relationship. Um, and then when the other relationship is revealed and the whole story is told at the end of the day, then all of a sudden you're allowed to go, wow, okay, all right, now that makes sense. Now we have an understanding for those things that we're building and you were enjoying along the way. But the journey has to be good, because uh, destinations aren't enough, you know? I mean, it's terrible on the top of Everest. It's not like you <laughs> climb Everest and you go through that experience and you get up there and like Duke Ellington's up there and you've got like, you know, a raw bar. And, and it's like you get up there and it's worse than it is all the way up, you know? And, and so I think the journey should be the satisfaction of the show and, and the ultimate answers should just inform that looking backwards. Well, Lizzie is clearly Red's weakness, and, and this is a disciplined criminal, but we've seen moments where he's, he's dropped his guard and, and uh, potentially uh, entered into some dangerous situations because of that weakness. Is that going to trip him up more? Is this, is, are we entering a danger zone with, with Red in that uh, Lizzie's different than, than any, anyone else in his life? I would say, I mean, I, don't, I think that one of the things that's uh, attractive about Reddington and enjoyable about him is that He's not a psychopath. He's not someone who is a run-of-the-mill criminal. He has a big heart, and he is a, enthusiastic about life, Liz, first and foremost, but about everything. And I think that does engage you, the viewer. It engages us in him and his life and what he wants. And yes, he has vulnerabilities, and I think that's what makes him human. So much of what he does is a fantasy. So much of who he is is wishful fulfillment. But unless it's grounded in something that I think we can all relate to, the idea that there's someone in her and other things that we dramatize and show that, that we all have, can relate to the feelings that he has for those people, then he does become much more of a caricature. So I think it's essential that we have that. And then, I think like James said, we, we write him into a place, read into a place where those vulnerabilities do get him in the positions and situations that are incredibly difficult Right so let's talk a little bit about season two. Uh, obviously, we left uh, at the end of uh, last season uh, with, with Berlin on the run, missing a hand, but, but still on the <laughs> run. Uh, will we see more of, of him? Is he regrouping to, uh, to, to attack again? And uh, you know, what, are, what are some, some, some of the themes heading into uh, your sophomore season? Yeah, you, you know, looking at the second season, sort of moving ahead, um, uh, Berlin is clearly still out there. And, and sort of seeing how, when we pick up, we'll see sort of how our, our team is um, recovering and, and living and, and grappling with this large question that's out there of who this man is and, and what the relationship is to Red. And I think, like James said, it would be very interesting to see sort of how Red um, lives with that and how that affects uh, his life. I think one of the things that's, that's interesting about the character to me is not just what, um, what is he capable of? What does he care about? But what is he afraid of? And what concerns him? What, what, what is fear throughout him? And there are elements of that with Berlin that we're going to be exploring. And um, you know, the dynamic of the, the team has shifted with with Mira now gone. And um, it's a, it, it, we're also going to be picking up. I think another thing that's that's going to be fun to explore is um, just how Liz recovers from from harm. And, and, and this marriage, there's sort of, you know, it's a, analogous to a split, you know, the cheating husband, and, and is, is, Tom, is Tom dead?